Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. All right, shalom, Mosiah Christ bless. Uh, my name is Captain Gideon. You're watching uh, 15 Minutes with the Captain to my right. Officer Daniel. All right, let's get right to it. Um, the title for today's class is called Prisoners of Hope. Uh, let's start with Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. So the Bible is asking us to turn from turn to the Lord, turn to the stronghold, because the Lord is our stronghold. We are prisoners of hope. Why? Because we have hope in everything that has nothing to do with this Bible. We hope in business. We hope in money. We hope in this government. We hope in this nation. But the Bible is asking us to turn to the stronghold. Let's go to Psalm 91 and read verse 1. The book of Psalm, chapter 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall... No, he that abide in Babylon and trust in Babylon. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Where you find a secret place of the Most High? This Bible right here. Because it's the book of secret that many is trying to understand cannot. Because why? The understanding was not given unto them. It is only given to the 12 tribe of Israel. Read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Under what? In the, under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the shadow of the Almighty. But many of us abide under what? The shadow of America, the shadow of Europe, the shadow of businesses, the shadow of their money. Those are the things that we put our trust in. That's why we become prisoners of hope. Because those things can only give us a little hope, but salvation, it cannot give it to us. Only the Most High God, only that stronghold can give us salvation. Read. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my what? My refuge. No, your money is your refuge. He is my refuge. The U.S. government is your refuge. He is my refuge. He is my refuge. Read. And, and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. In him, in him will I trust. Curses the man that put his trust into another man. How can you ever trust the same man that enslaved you and, and, and raped your, your foremothers and your forefathers and killed and tortured you? How can you put your hope in that man? Matter of fact, give me uh, pull up any uh, the pictures at random. I don't I don't mind which one you pull first. Put them on the screen. Let me see. So us here, we trust in this. The same people that used to take pictures. In case you guys don't know about these pictures, uh, you can find them in a book called Without Sanctuary. These pictures should be postcards that they're sent to one another. But today, we faithfully trust in those people. Next one. So check this out. Um, beneath the shadows, what do you see? That's a sea of people Wat uh, watching a man get lynched. Those are the people that make the laws of this country, but we trust in them. Next one. Those are little kids right here. And you see the handcuff in that man's hand? What that means? He was actually arrested by a cop. Because regular folks don't walk around with handcuffs, do they? So how did he get to be lynched if they're supposed to be upholding the law? We are prisoners of hope. Give me Lamentation 4 and 17. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, as our, for us read. our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. Give me some more pictures. That nation cannot save us, nor do they want to save us. If anything, they just want to do away with us. This is why Planned Parenthood exists. Now, right before this situation happened in Del Rio's, 
then they just allow a lot of Afghan people to come to the U.S. Then they give them um, credit cards, money, houses. Then they also tell us those so-called Arab people are terrorists, but they'll let them in. But us, this is how we get treated. Just like a runaway slave. But we still have trust in this system as though it's going to save us. No, it's going to kill you. All right. So uh, go back to Zechariah. Zechariah, uh, Zechariah 9 and 12. Go back to that scripture. So what you got to understand is we have become prisoners of hope. We are so broken that we end up putting all our faith and trust in the same group of people that have done us so much evil from the day that they had the opportunity up until today. Remember what Esau said? My dad is close to dying. Guess what? Once he's dead, I'm going to kill my brother. So they've been hunting us ever since. The hatred is strong. Here's another picture. So enlarge it. Script, uh, it says, what really happened? Above, you see 1960, father, mother, and kids. 2019, you see mother and kids. What you're watching right there is what you call crafty counsel. Use welfare to get the men out of the house. Because through all the uh, tank, uh, think tanks, they already know that without a man, you, a, a woman cannot raise young men. So they design a system to ensure that we fail, to ensure that you can't raise your boys, and then to ensure that they end up in jail. You follow? What happened in the 80s? People start selling drugs. Uh, mo mothers can't raise their kids. The kids in the street doing all kinds of things. And we become what? Bombs and vagabonds. And then the same mothers cry to uh, the system, we need help. Okay, you need help? How about 30 years for one ounce of crack? But now that the, it, had, it had, uh, has been reversed, when you go on Mass Ave, majority of the crackers are white. Guess what the, they say now? Oh, they need help. You need a methadone clinic. You see how it goes? But simple things you could look at to teach you not to trust your oppressors, but some of us you still trust in our oppressors. We are prisoners of hope, and that hope is going to kill you. Read. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold. So turn to the stronghold. Read. You prisoners of hope. Give me 2 Samuel 22 and, and, and 2. So we are all prisoners of hope here, and thank the Lord that Mosai has waken up the prophets to go teach the people because it, it, I find it like, uh, how can I say? It's weird that, you know, the simplest of things you could open your eyes and see, but until somebody pointed out to you, it was right in front of you that you, you can't see it. Such a thing as um, the, the natives didn't know how to read nor write, and they were running around butt naked. We spent our whole life believing that thing. While watching on TVs and seeing pyramids in, uh, uh, in, in Mexico. It never dawned on you to say, hold up. They were naked, dumb, and stupid. But they built buildings that the brightest brain today cannot rebuild. So they had enough sense to build such buildings. But they didn't have enough sense to, buy, to build a little house to dwell in. They knew that kind of math, but they couldn't even sew two pieces of clothing together to cover their shame. Those are lies we gobbled up with no problem. Our job is to, what, discover those lies and show it to the people so the people can open their eyes. So the scriptures say, turn to the stronghold. Read that. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. And he said, the Lord is my rock. And my fortress. So the Lord is your rock and your fortress. A fortress is what you use to fortify yourself. Back in the days, you had fortresses and you have a big wall and you had watchmen standing on top of the walls. So the wall protect the people and the watchmen watch for the danger. You follow? So the Lord is the fortress and we are the watchmen watching for the danger and we're warning the people to come back to the stronghold so they can be safe. Read. And my deliverer. The God of my rock. And my deliverer. He's the only one that can deliver us. Because when you look at this system, how it's designed, the crafty council that they put together, and let alone the armies that they have, the weapons that they have, if it's not for the Lord, we were done already. 
Because ain't none of us here got any power to stand before the system. But the Lord is our power, and he gave us the power, and he put it in our mouth. And he pleased the Lord by the foolishness of these words right here, preaching, to destroy this sinful nation. So if you want to stay with them, you're going to die with them. You follow? Read. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. The God of my rock, his, and him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Read. My high tower. My high tower. Read. And my refuge. Mm -hmm. My savior, thou savest me from violence. Read on. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So that's who we're supposed to be called on. I mean, we're supposed to be calling on. Put the other picture up, the last one you had up. So instead... The prisoners of hope turn to this right here. A statue that cannot hear, that cannot smell, that if a bird drops some hot doo-doo on top of his head, cannot even wipe his forehead. You understand? If a wind blows and it falls to its face, it's going to break to, sh to pe uh, pieces, but people choose to pray that instead. Where did they get that from? From their enemies. At the tip of the whip. And today we gladly serve the enemy. Yes, sir, master boss. I'll do anything you say, boss. God, just give me five dollars now. Oh, five is all, is all you want? How about you take 25? Oh, sir, I'll kill for you too, sir. The dude sit in the office and just print any amount of money he want. Money ain't, ain't a thing. So if that's what you want, sell your soul for two dollars. Go ahead. But we became prisoners of hope. Isaiah 30 and uh, 1 and 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children. Woe to who? The rebellious children. The Bible said destruction to all the rebellious children of, of the nation of Israel. Read. Say if the Lord. Say it who? Say if the Lord. Say the Lord. Read. That take counsel, but not of me. So they take counsel, but not of God. They'll read every single book. They'll sit in every sitting. They're part of every, every um, how can I call that? Every club's. You know, um, all, all the secret society, they're part of taking everything. But they will not listen to the word of, of, of God. You know why? Because the word of God does not come with a brand new house. It does not come with a brand new car. It doesn't come with a million dollars in your pocket. Because I guarantee you, if we were rich, the whole world would listen to us. Because that's what the people are after. Dirty piece of bread to fill their belly. That's why the scripture called them all greedy dogs. Read. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So we are covered, but not with the spirit of the Lord, because the spirit of the Lord is found in this Bible right here. You must be abiding in the Lord's statutes and commandments. That's the only way to have the spirit of the Lord on you. So if you're out there doing whatever you're doing, then that means what? You trust in oppression, and the spirit that's on you is the spirit of the devil. Read. That walk to go down into Egypt. Back then we trust in Egypt. But today we trust what? In the shadow of Egypt. It's going to tell you. Read. And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen the, themselves to the strength of Pharaoh. So instead of strengthening themselves at the, at the mouth of the Lord, which is this Bible, they, we ran to Pharaoh back then. Read. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And today our trust is in what? The, shadows of, the shadow of Egypt. Look at the, your dollar bill. You have your pyramid with your OCNI. That's Egypt. So this kingdom is a shadow of Egypt. So another aspect also, uh, the real Egypt had the children of Israel in slavery. Are we not in slavery here today? If you think you're free here, something wrong, I mean seriously wrong with you. If you think you're actually free in this country, something is seriously wrong with you. So give me uh, Revelation 18 and 4. Revelation 18 and 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So the Bible said, come out of her, my people. Does that mean get on the plane and fly somewhere? No, not at all. We have to come out of this place spiritually, mentally, because physically we're going to have to live here. But we don't have to partake in their thanksgiving. 
We don't have to partake in the uh, uh, churches. We don't have to partake in anything that they, that, that they do that's contrary to sound doctrine, which is what? The statutes, the laws, and the commandments. Read. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. Who, what people? My people. No, everybody. My people. Mine people. Because Christ tell you, I was not sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. So when he said come out of us, not talking about everybody. And even among our people, two-thirds will prefer to die with this kingdom. Because same thing that happened in the wilderness, many, many of our people did what? Because of bread, because of our lust. They say, yo, let's go back to Egypt. Because I remember the, the, the fish, the garlic, the leeks. So you're going to have people that's doing well here that really don't want to leave here. Because this is Esau's kingdom. This is their heaven. So if everything is going well for them, why should they seek the Lord? Read. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That ye be not what? Partakers of her sins. That ye be not partakers of her sins. That's how you come out of Babylon. You don't want to be partaking of her sin. So far, as long as you stay in their sins, you are what? Prisoners of hope. You're not turning back to the stronghold. So if you want to turn back to the stronghold, you got to listen to what this Bible have to say. Uh, give me Hosea 5.15. Hosea 5.15. So the Bible tells you if you, don't, if you come out, you won't receive of her sins and of her plague. But if you don't come out, what are you going to receive? Her sins and her plagues. And after you die... When the Lord returned, where are you going to be? In that beautiful museum called the Lake of Fire. The fire just burning you all day. Shoot, we might dump all the U.S. dollars on you. <laughs> Since that's what you like. <laughs> Make it rain, baby. <laughs> Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. I will go and return to my place. 